Monday morning. Good, good morning. You ready? <laughs> ready. Ready. <laughs> we're, we are ready. First Thessalonians <laughs> chapter 2. We're going to get fired up for that. And uh, we'll, be take, we'll be taking a hike later on today. We've got, a, we got our uh, special uh, yak tracks <laughs> on there that we can put on our boots for the ice that we're going to be encountering. Mm. Hopefully it'll keep us stable. <laughs> No falls. Yeah, you had, a, <laughs> you had a fall last time that we went. So, but you didn't have the rack, you didn't have the yak tracks on. No. <laughs> no. Will be good. So I think this is this will be good. Yeah. It'll all be good. So First Thessalonians chapter two. We're thankful that you're joining us this day. And um, again, I just want to encourage all of you. Uh, you can always go back and look at any devotions. They're uh, they're all online at GoodShepherdSC.org. You want to go back and. If you missed any or you'd like to go back and check out other ones, uh, actually 200 of them are online, I think. That's a limit. So not all of them are online because we've done over 200 videos now. Uh, and then uh, also, you, again, if you have any prayer requests, any co questions, comments, PastorBeatsBang at Comcast.net. And um, always willing to have a discussion with anybody as we go through things. This is a good, uh, good chapter here. He's, he's again talking to the people in Thessalonica, uh, which is the capital of Macedonia, which is in modern-day Greece. Um, I think it's called Thessalonica now. Really close to the, uh, to the old uh, biblical name. So anyway, chapter 2, and uh, I think Matt's going to kick us off here with the first nine verses. You know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a failure. We had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi. As you know, but with the help of our God, we dare to tell you his gospel in spite of strong opposition. The appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please men, but God, who tests our hearts. You know we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from men, not from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone, while we preach the gospel of God to you. Picking up verse 10. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believe. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. For you, brothers, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own countrymen the same things those churches suffered from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displeased God and are hostile to all men in their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. All right, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, on this Monday morning, we pray, Lord God, you would be with us, uh, surround us with your everlasting and loving arms, and uh, lead us forth, Lord God, that we would um, encourage one another live this week to your glory, to your honor, be a blessing to other people that you have placed in our lives, and that we will be faithful in following you. Help us, Lord God, uh, for we are weak, you are strong, and uh, your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, there's a couple uh, kind of important, well, it's all, all the scripture is important, right? <laughs> but there's, there's some things that are pretty, pretty important here. But the first thing I want to say is, um, how he reminds them that when they were with him, you know, if you're legit, if your ministry, if your uh, interaction with anybody, if you're 
reaching out to anyone is going to bear fruit, uh, there has to be a sense of consistency in your own life. In other words, uh, if you're saying one thing to somebody and then doing something else, it's, it's not really legit. And so he, he reminds them that, hey, we were with you. You saw the way we lived. We didn't have impure motives. Um, it's kind of funny with the, the masks thing. It's like, we didn't put in a mask on to cover up any of our greed. And, uh, you know, this time of the pandemic, it's like, oh, wait a second. Everybody has masks on all over the place. Uh, you can go to a store, masks on. We go, you know, any place in public, you go to, you've got masks on. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about uh, that somehow they would be um, using the gospel as a cover-up to gain personal wealth. Gee, has that ever happened in ministries? Hmm. <laughs> right? You know, so the, you know we can all think of, of uh, scandals in which uh, somebody was manipulating things in order to get rich themselves on behalf of the uh, using the gospel, right? Using Christianity in some way hmm. to be able to get rich for themselves. And so I would encourage you, like this is especially prevalent in the um, prosperity gospel realm. To be very uh, aware of, you know, how does a person live? How does someone who says, I'm proclaiming the gospel, how are they living personally? Do they have a multi-million dollar mansion uh, that they got off of uh, the offerings of other people? You know, all kinds of other stuff. And I'd be very, very skeptical uh, if somebody is living in that realm in that way, off of the offerings of other people. What is their motive? Why are they doing the things that they're doing? So he's reminding them, hey, we didn't do that. We worked hard night and day uh, in there. So uh, I think that's important for all of us. And uh, hey, that's why we thats why we don't pay you much money, just because it keep you, keep you humble. Right? <laughs> Isn't that good news for you? <laughs> no, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> no, no, no. no, that's it. No, it's all good. Uh, people, he also tells us in other places, uh, the Apostle Paul, that the, uh, the ox shouldn't be muzzled uh, when he's treading out the grain. In other words, so <clears throat> there is a uh, call for people to support those who are doing ministry. Um, sometimes the Apostle Paul had to be a tent maker to support himself so the, pro- the gospel can go forward. But other times he received enough support that it could do full-time work in ministry. So we want to encourage you to be generous to those who um, are uh, doing the work of ministry so that they can continue to engage in that work of ministry and not have to have all, uh, other ways of making income, other, other alternatives. <clears throat> so um, I love this uh, analogy that he used, um, <clears throat> that he used in which he's, Comparing, um, he uses two analogies: that of a mother and that of a father. Father, um, you are witnesses, verse ten, and so is God of how holy, righteous, blameless we were among you who believe. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his children. That's verse. That's verse ten. But then in verse, skipping back to verse six and seven. We're not looking for the praise of men, nor from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We love you so much that we delighted to share with you not only the gospel but our lives as well. And I like these pictures that he paints of a mother and a father. So I think of of moms and how tirelessly their work for no real. Uh, accolades they're just giving on themselves night and day a lot of times when the children especially when the children are little and uh, just pouring into their lives um, and again you know you're not really getting much thanks for that and it's out of out of a, just a, a sheer love for for uh, for the children that they've been blessed with and then you think of a father in, in the midst of that and um, how he interacts and deals with his children, and I would would say kind of th- this way. It's like when you're when a child is learning. How, do you remember when you learned how to ride a bicycle? Do you have any memory of that, or just kind of a little bit, maybe? little bit, not not really that much. 
Did you take any wipe apps at first? Yeah, probably. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember them or not really? Yeah, most people. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Who taught you how to ride your bike bicycle? You remember? My dad. Yeah. A lot. Of, a lot of times it's a dad job, right? Yeah. Right. And I think the reason being is, you know, a wipe app's going to come, and uh, a mother is has a great caring and nurturing uh, aspect to him. But when you fall and scuff your knee, you have a little blood there, and you don't really want to get on the back on the bicycle, what's a dad likely to say? Get back on the bike. You can do it, right? So there's a, there's kind of was like these these different ways in which parents encourage and, and um, lift up their children. And I think that's what the Apostle Paul is kind of getting at, is that moms have this special caring and compassion uh, a lot of times, and fathers have this way of encouraging them that even if you fall, even if you're going to get hurt, you're going to get up and you're going to do this. You're going to, you're going to master it. You're going to be able to ride your bicycle mm -hmm. in there. And so, of course, then you had to wipe out on your mountain bike. And <laughs> Mom or dad wasn't there for that. <laughs> that was a little different than normal riding. That's right. <laughs> that's just, yeah, that's different than learning how to ride. All right. So, so uh, anyway, um, there is, I think, ways in which a mom is uniquely made by God to encourage and, and foster and, and help their children in a way dads are uniquely made by God to encourage and foster uh, their children. So he's, he's using both of those, and, and we need both to nurture our children. So uh, my heart goes out, like if somebody is a single parent, I think the church should be trying to uh, fill in in some of the, those areas. Let's say it's a single parent mom. Well, maybe there's a man that can mentor, mentor be there to mentor and help uh, disciple some of the children in there. Or vice versa. Uh, we need that balance in the, in the bringing up of children that they, they walk with the Lord. Um, and his goal is to be imitator, that they be imitators for you brothers verse 14, became imitators of God's church in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. In other words, so imitators ultimately of Christ. That's the goal. Um, and then uh, this ending part unfortunately has been twisted and used in history at times to justify anti-Semitism. You, you can see how if somebody takes this out of context, how that could be. He says like this. Um, the same things, verse uh, going into verse 14, you suffer for your own countrymen, the same things those churches suffer from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displease God and are hostile to all men in their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. So, some people twist this and use this as a, as a justification to say, hey, the wrath of God is against the Jews. Uh, that gives us license to do violence against the Jewish people. Not That is taking this out of context that, it, that is completely wrong. Uh, because, yes, he's recognizing there's persecution right now, and there was persecution, of Jewish people against Christianity at first, uh, before Christianity grew and reversed that and persecuted persecuted Jews. But he's speaking to something that is going on right there at the moment. And the reality is, he, if we, if we look at it biblically in the whole context, and even what the Apostle Paul says in other places, it's not the Jews ultimately who killed Jesus. It's not even the Romans who ultimately killed Jesus, like Pontius, he, he was crucified and buried, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, all right, so we recognize that Pontius Pilate ultimately gave the order, he's Roman, the Roman governor, but that's not who killed Jesus, who killed Jesus, me, you, because our sin drove him to the cross for us, and so we can't lay the a blame ultimately on anybody else except our own rebellion against God in which Jesus is praying, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. 
nevertheless not my will be done but yours and he takes upon himself the sins of the world what does that mean your sins my sins Matt's sins the sins of the world taken upon himself I drove him to the cross for me he did that for me he did that for you so uh, that's that's very important for us to, to recognize in the midst of this and um, ultimately the wrath of God is satisfied on the cross uh, and the only thing that brings about his uh, the staying of that wrath on us would be rejection of his gift to us of forgiveness. In other words, you know, Jesus uh, suffered for the sins of the world. That's a done deal, right? That's, that's done. So what brings condemnation to people is rejection of God's gift of his suffering for our sin. Somebody's saying, no, I don't want that. I'm, not, I'm going to reject Jesus and his suffering on the cross for me, and I'm going my own way. And so the wrath of God remains on that person because they've rejected God's payment for, for their sin, and they want to go their own way. So it's very important. I mean, this don't, uh, you know, occasionally I said some people go down these paths and, and use this for anti-Semitism. That is not, uh, it's taking it out of context. Um, and not looking at the big picture either. Any other comments you have, you have on that? On that comment? No. <clears throat> I think verse 4 uh, is interesting to me. We speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. Yeah. Uh, you know, how often in ministry or church work or even as Christians do we seek after the pleasure of man? Right. Um, every it's, day, to some degree. It's nice to get the accolades, right? We, and some people feed off of that, right? Right. Instead of just saying, you know what? I'm here to serve God. Mm -hmm. And some people are going to like it. Some people are not going to like it. <laughs> and some people are going to be in opposition. Right. All right. Well, we're going to have, have a wonderful day. Let's uh, pray. Father, we pray for your blessing to be upon each and every person that is listening to this, that they would be encouraged to follow you, to, to just seek to really know you more deeply this week that they would encourage, be encouraged to love their neighbor well this week. Lord God, lead us forth with hope in our hearts, with joy knowing that we are yours and we are loved with an everlasting love. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week.